Hello my creative friends, this is your tutor Anjali Tamdai from Global Cake Toppers. I have been a Saracino ambassador for more than 6 years now and using their products for quite a long time. I love all the Saracino products right from modeling paste to cocoa butter or may it be cake coverings. The cake coverings not only look good but they also taste and smell great. Don't forget to visit their website for more details and to find more about Saracino. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do quilling on cakes using Saracino sugar paste. So let's get started with it. For this session of quilling on cakes, we need Saracino cocoa butter. Sarcino modeling paste. Now that comes in 5 kg tubs and 1 kg tub as well. We need pink, blue, green, yellow, black and brown. We also need Sarcino pasta top that is used for covering the cakes. You can see I have prepared my cake for the tutorial here. I have covered it with the white pasta top and it's really nice and smooth. So we need some pasta top there. We also need some dust colors for dusting and a metal palette there with a candle tea light candle holder there. We also need a rolling pin, paint brushes, sharp knife there and some cornstarch. So let's get started with the session. So to begin with what we need is a sketch here that I have. Now I have drawn on both the sides of my tracing paper as you can see because I want the right and the wrong side um, on my cake there. Take some Saracino modeling paste and start kneading it. You can see how nice and stretchy it is and it does not even stick to your hands. This way. Knead it well. Now I don't need cornstarch but if you think it's sticking to your hands you could use a bit of cornstarch. You can see how nice soft and smooth it has become. Place it in the center and start rolling it out. Now I might use a tiny bit of cornstarch there. Lightly dust your mat with that bit of cornstarch there and roll it. Now we need an elongated piece here to fit in this beautiful little lady there. This 
way. Make sure you have even thickness all over. So roughly I would be looking for a thickness of 0.3 millimeters there. Like this. Now, what you would do is take your design and place it on top of your modeling paste there and give it a quick rub with your fingers. You can see we have transferred the design on our face there. Now using a sharp knife, start cutting out the outlines. this way And the last bit here, like this. Now let's start with painting her first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some dust colors and give her some shades out there on her face, her hair and even some shades here before we start doing the actual quilling work on her dress there. So let's get started with doing that. Now I've taken some dust colors here in my palette. So I have some pink, some green, black, brown and skin tone so basically just take some sarcino dust in your palette there this is the skin tone and i have some brown black and some blues, pinks. So let's start with coloring her there. I have one edible pen here, which you can use for outlining. So you could give those highlights before you paint or even after you paint 
it's up to you and your preference i just prefer giving some highlights there this way and the same thing here if you don't have this kind of edible pen you could just paint this using a paint brush and your edible dust colors mixed with some distilled water or evaporator there Now, I'm not going to do her features at this stage. I'll do it after I do my dusting there. So, take some skin color there and start dusting. Now, take some pink and go on the edges. On her neck here. Again, take some skin tone and on her hands. Some dark pink. Now let's outline the remaining portion there. when you place your hand make sure you're not resting your hand on your paste here because you will have those fingerprints on your paste otherwise so be very careful when you're doing that Okay. 
Now let's continue with her hand here. I'm just re using a regular round brush for dusting. And you need tiny, tiny bit of that dust there. If you feel your brush has that extra bit of dust on it, make sure to just give it a quick dab on your kitchen towel there before you put all that dust onto your main drawing. Okay. On this edge and similarly a bit of that pink on this. Okay, now give it a quick rub on your kitchen towel. Get some brown. For her hair. this way take some black and mix it so you're blending. Again, take some more brown. And go over that black. Similarly here. So basically you're adding a bit of those highlights. This way. brown Same thing here. Take a smaller brush and 
gave a few more highlights here and there we very feel it's necessary and once you're happy with that just go over with your edible pen there um, draw a few strands this way Now, take some pink and highlight her dress. Going a little lighter on top there. And then just blend it a bit. A waistband. And her back there. So you can see I'm using that tiny, tiny bit of paint there, the dust. Now, I'm going to use for her dress, I'm going to use a mix of pink, blue and green. Now these are the highlights that I want on her dress there. So this is the paint that I've used. Now I'll go with the green. Some green. Just tiny bit of green there. And on the edges here. Take some blue. And go on the edges here. You could go with a bigger brush if you want. I'm just comfortable using the same one. Now, take some pink. And this way.
taking some green here and highlighting it on this edge. This way. Now use a bit more of your green and go around this edge. Take tiny bit of that green, go around here on this edge. And some blue, let's go on this edge here. like this blend it again take some pink so I'm alternating my colors here as you can see Similarly, we'll do a bit of green and blue and finish this part here.
Once your figurine is ready there, you have dusted her with all those beautiful colors, keep her aside. And on your mat, take some Saracino modeling paste that I'm going to use here. Now I have few colors, um, pink, yellow, green, black, and blue. We'll also need a rolling pin and some cornstarch for dusting, some sharp blades or knives, whatever you would have. So let's get started with this. I'm going to start using some pink there. You can see how nicely it stretches. It's so soft and the color, it's so vibrant. That's what I like about Saracino. Plus, it doesn't stick to your hands. It just takes that tiny bit of cornstarch and is ideal for extreme temperatures. So, it's perfect when you're using in warmer conditions as well. So, dust a bit of cornstarch there. And... Roll your paste. Now I need an elongated sheet out here. So one nice thin elongated sheet of pink. Just keep rubbing a bit of cornstarch if you need. I'm not taking any more cornstarch here, so whatever is on my mat is enough. Just roll it nice and thin. You can see how nicely it rolls into a thin sheet without any cracks. See, and it's so smooth. Okay, now let's start cutting it. Take a sharp knife or a blade, whatever you would have, and I'm going to cut out thin strips of pink like these. So you could use this kind of mat which has lines and just place it on top and then you can measure it while you're cutting. So that is a lot easier when you're cutting strips. I'll cut few more strips like this and then we'll get started with the decorations. My strips here are ready. So let's take some glue, edible glue. And my first strip is actually going to go on the side here. So just apply a bit of glue there. And start from her base. This way. Now. The 
ends just gently roll it and move it upwards like this once again take that tiny bit of glue and glue these ends together like this next I'll be putting one here like this so take some glue and rub it on the top overturn it and put it on those lines this way Now the ends once again start rolling these ends this way take some glue and stick it together tiny bit of glue here now with the other end of your brush just gently roll it on the sides Like this okay similarly your next strip there once again apply that bit of glue on the ends overturn it and place it on those lines like this with the other end gently get it to place roll this end this way and let's glue it now my next strip is going to go from here 
like this and this way now you could even apply your glue on the lines there but I just prefer doing it on my sugar paste here this way gently lift it and place it on your lines once again just rub your brush through Sarcino dries when it dries it really dries nice and hard but there is one more thing that I love is it gives you longer working hours so it takes a little longer to dry and that's what I love about Sarcino because it gives me a lot of working time especially when I'm doing delicate things like these or my patterns now this time I'm rolling it on the other end this way so gently roll it and apply a bit of glue here this way once we finish doing those main lines We'll start filling it internally with the rest of the colors there. Quilling itself is very calming. I used to love quilling as a teenager and make some cards for my friends and family and I developed great interest in quilling because it was rather very easy things that we needed were minimal there you just needed those quilling papers and your quilling stick I think quilling is really good for young kids who are developing their motor skills. Again, gently, 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 you're rolling it. And this time, I'm going to put it somewhere here. tiny bit of glue on the sides and some glue here if you don't have glue you could also use distilled water make sure that it holds well this way
your next strip that goes up here and there. So our primary color here is pink and then our filler colors would be blue, yellow and green. I've chosen all the vibrant colors there so that the design looks nice and vibrant when we do it. You could go with a color theme and perhaps if you just decide to go with pink, you could go with different shades of pink there. This way. I'm going to roll it up like this. Once again, tiny bit of glue there. And fix it. Now just let her dry there. We'll go with one more pink here. Now apply some glue on the sides once again. Take your pink strip and start it from her waist this way. Now start curling it inwards. Like this. Now, paste it here. Just a tiny bit of glue, a bit more, and some glue. Glue both of them together as well. And this way. With the other end, once again, make sure it's nice and curvy there. It should look very flowy. 
and then another strip out here this way now start calling this inwards once again so you could call it inwards or outwards like you know clockwise or anti-clockwise gently get it to shape there so this end I'm actually going to push it and pinch a bit so that it's nice and pointy out there and I'm going to curl this inwards like this tiny bit of glue here and tiny bit of glue here like this okay now let's start rolling some blue and green strips so I'll just get my blue and green strips ready and then we'll start working with these ones here I'm actually going to put one more pink strip here before I move on to my blue there. So tiny bit of glue here and you can actually play around with these strips and try and keep them in different places before you actually glue them so that you're sure what looks good now this could even go something like somewhere like this depending on the size of your cake there I am going to stick it alongside here and gently press it to hold similarly a bit of glue here and some glue here so that it holds together tiny bit of glue hold this and this together this way let's take some blue and start rolling exactly the way we rolled our pink we would want the same kind of thickness 
Now, if you are a beginner and you're not sure um, about the thickness, I would recommend you to use something that's called dough sticks, where you put in both the sticks on either sides, and then you know that you're rolling exactly the same thickness there. This way. I guess with Sarcino you could just go thinner and thinner. Okay, so this is our desired thickness that we are looking for. Same thing again. We are going to cut thin strips. Once again. Okay. So I'm going to cut a few more strips and get everything ready once again and then we'll start putting up strips around that little beautiful girl there so we have our blue strip here let's start applying some glue on one end Just that tiny bit of glue. Okay. And then place it here. this way. Now start rolling your strip. Loosely roll it. Never roll it too tight. And when you come over here you're going to slightly pinch this and pull it here this way Same thing over here. So my strips are lying here on my desk and you can see if it was a regular paste, I would say they would start cracking when you start rolling them like this because they start drying very quickly. Now with Sarcino, this is what I'm talking about that you get really longer working hours. So you're going to start from the center this way. Call it up.
take another strip and start curling it so there are two ways that you could curl you could keep it on your mat and curl it or you could curl it on your fingers now it depends on you with whatever you're comfortable but just remember one thing that you're not tightly binding it because when you're quilling with paper we usually tend to tightly bind the paper but since this is sugar you are going to loosely bind it okay now I'm just shaping it this way and glue it. Now a tiny bit of glue on each layer there so that you're holding all of them together like this gently pinch it on the top so you get your drop shape there now lift it and place it here this way Once you're happy with that, the shape and the size and everything, you'll apply a bit of glue. So, just slide it, hold all those rings together, apply that bit of glue there and place it back this way Now we could even go with few more strips, the leftover strips and maybe put some like this. So as I said earlier, you can just play around with these strips. Similarly, we could go around here. I'm going to go with one more over here. So just measure your required amount and with your knife, chop it. and glue it in place this way ok 
Okay, similarly, we need a small piece that goes up here. Apply some glue. And one more that goes up here from here to here maybe so once you have all your strips ready it doesn't take too long to actually finish this piece here and in case you decide to take a break just pack those uh, strips in a ziploc bag or just keep it on the mat and cover it with cling film so that you can come back to it and work at a later stage this way okay now let's put up something here Don't forget to take a sip of water every now and then because that is what I always tell all my students. Um, it is very important that you relax when you're working with your cakes and your sugar craft because no matter what you're doing, it is very important that, you know, that peace of mind, that relaxation because it reflects in your work. That's what I believe. So I'm going to start from here this way. And then start calling it. So when you're calling on your fingers. Be very gentle. Some people tend to have really warm hands. In that case, don't handle your strips for too long. If you feel it's melting or sticking onto your fingers there, try to use a bit of cornstarch and Avoid handling it for too long. So this way you're pulling it in between those gaps there and call this a bit like this. Now let's shape this one like this. Let's add some here. So let's measure this one. Okay. This way. And one more. Okay. Like this. Now let's do something for this one. Well, 
once again you are glowing so just remember that you were applying it only on the edges in this manner Start rolling. Like this. Okay, and I might just pop one more. Perhaps up here. Gently lift it and glue it. This way now start rolling And we want something for that gap there. So roll up. Just glue at the end at the moment. And gently lift it. So we'll see what fits in that gap there. Something like this. Okay. Once again, lift it. Apply some glue on this end here. And place it back. Now, what we'll do is we need something that goes around. 
like this. So let's trim this and let's put it up here in this manner. one more that could go here again trim it you can see our strips are still nice and flexible and the best thing is that they don't even crack and they are just lying on my desk here So when you choose right, right products, it makes you know, working with that a lot easier. And that eventually would keep you motivated towards doing complicated stuff or trying something new. Now. I want something that goes around like this and it flares over there. So I'm going to roll this end. And I'll glue this side here. Let's apply some glue here. Gently lift this. Place it on this end and glue it. Okay. Let's put something over here. So, once again, roll. And trim off your end there. Apply a bit of glue. Overturn. Plant. Some more glue. Let's put it over here. Now, this way. And just press it. like this I'm just going to trim out this let's measure okay. 
scan a bit of glue. this way okay we have two gaps where I think we'll go with more of green and yellow and then we'll see uh, we might just move back to some pinks so let's start with some green there let's start rolling our green here You get two different variations in green with Saracino, the lighter version and a darker version of green. You can even mix and match these two colors together to get a different shade of green or you could mix um, the green with yellow to get that kind of lime green. So you can always blend different uh, colored sugar paste to get different shades I would always do that I just love playing around with colors so you can see it just takes a couple of minutes to roll this paste here and as I said you can go as thin as you know you want and it's not going to tear apart that's the best thing okay let's start cutting this one into strips Now, let's bring her back here and start decorating her with our green strips there. Okay, so let's start putting our strip. Apply a bit of glue on this end. Start rolling this. So you need to adjust and glue it Okay. 
this way. Mm. It is sort of a spring day. <laughs> okay. The next one. Now, I'm just trimming the ends, start curling it. Now, if curling this way, you find curling this way a little difficult, what you could do is always keep your brush in the center and start curling around it if you find that easier. I just prefer curling it this way. I'm going to trim this bit here. Now make sure whenever you are curling you end up on the bottom there and not at the top. And apply a bit of glue on each layer there. No. Gently press it on the top. Slide it, overturn, apply a bit of glue. And place it here. Now. Bring it back to shape. Moving on to the other strip there. We will. Put a few green strips around now. You could even use your Dresden tool when you're doing this. Um, I'm just using my brush because rather than you know handling two different tools at the same time I'm just using two different ends to save up on my time there and one more that goes from here to here. This way. Now 
my next strip here like some glue on this end here and slide that strip right to the end Calling this one. glue it here and get it to shape with the other end just gently press so that they stick together this way Few bits of green here once again start curling so what you could do is curl a few bits before you start decorating and then you can start arranging them all together If you're doing something like that make sure you keep that in an airtight container so that it doesn't dry out or else it will start cracking if you keep them for too long Lift all of that together. And this time, I'm going to put it this way. then press the other one like this and a few strips so let's measure when you're sitting for too long working with your sugar craft or your cakes make sure that your posture is right 
very often people tend to sit in a wrong posture there and eventually there is, there are back problems or people start facing um, other health issues because their posture is not correct there so every now uh, I would recommend every now and then that you take a break, you go for a short walk maybe and or just go, you know, go for a sip of water there. So take a short break every now and then. I think that even refreshes your mind there when you take a break. Sometimes, you know, when things are not working the way we want um, in our pieces here. And we sort of get frustrated with what we're doing. It's better to leave it at that stage there for some time. And return back after a break with a fresh mind there. Perhaps we would do a lot better. And... At times, you know, like if I'm doing something and I don't like what I'm doing, I would just leave it at that stage for a while. I would rethink with my design there and then come back to it the next day maybe at times. This way. We have put two of the green strips here. And we'll put some here now. Now, let's glue this. Apply a bit of glue. it here call this trip and put it here. Okay. Now we'll put one more strip that curls in the same way. Measure it and trim it. Don't forget your glue. This way. Put it back here. Now, this one. Ok, 
Okay. I am going to put this one out here. this way and small curl apply a bit of glue on the other end and some on the edge of that strip there remember this is your edible glue here and not just any craft glue this is just for the beginners who don't know. Slightly pinch and slide it in there. Followed by this line here. this way another small curl like this let's put a few strips in there And one more. like this you feel really nice when you see everything coming together now let's roll out some yellow and start filling in these gaps here
Now I have prepared a few of my yellow swirls here. Let's get started with decorating. Now taking this tiny little one here. And gently slide it in here this way. Okay, let's pick up this one and let's glue it on this end here. Like this. Let it flow along with these lines here, gently press and put it together. Now, I have this one here, which I am going to put up here like this and in the gap there up here trim it this way Now, I'm actually going to swirl this one slightly so that it fits in this cap here and then I'm going to put it this way. Now apply a bit of glue on the other end. And put it up here. This way. Give slight curls. Now, let's put this one here. Once again, don't forget your glue. way put it together you have to be very gentle that's the only key technique when you're working with this and this one this way okay then
and add one yellow strip here like this and the other one here a common mistake that a lot of people would do is applying quite a lot of glue there don't do that because the glue is going to run underneath there and it's going to sort of bleed with the dust there and it might show up so please don't do um, something like that it's going to ruin your design this way and gently curl this in here like so If you like craft and working with papers, this is something that you're going to love doing. This way and a small little curl. in there like this I might go with one little yellow piece here. Gently slide it. one a smaller one that fits in this cap here some glue pop it in here Pull this one. Once again, just cut out a triangular piece that will pop in over here. At 
that bit of glue. And fix it here. Now, let's roll some pink and then we'll see what works well. If we need any of the colors from the blue, greens or the yellows, we'll just try to balance that. So let's roll our pink. Here. Like so. Call that up and glue it. like this. Similarly, apply a bit of glue here on the sides and pop in this yellow and let's put it here. like this. Okay, so I have prepared this one to go in this big gap here. You can see how you could change the shape of this from oval to a rounded one and if you want that leaf kind of shape or a petal shape just pinch it on the top and you would get that pointy end so this is how you could alter your swirls I usually tend to keep it in an oval shape or a round shape until I paste it up here. Now slide it in that gap very gently with your brush. Give it that shape there. Let's take another one and swirl it. The key to this is having uniform strips and swirling it very gently. If you follow these two techniques correctly, you will land up getting an elegant quilling piece in your cake here. Because those two are the most common mistakes that one might tend to do. One is swirling it too tightly and secondly the strips are not of the same size. Now if you find it difficult to cut the strips of that same size there what you could do is use a ribbon cutter 
which has two ends and then you could cut it uh, equally or what you could do is use a scale to keep on one end and use your knife to slice your strips there now this is going to be a smaller one because we don't have a lot of space there Make sure that you make an appropriate size and it should not look too tight when you fit it in there. If you feel it's too tight, you could always pull it out. So not an issue. Slide it gently and press it. This way. Another thing that we need to remember is spacing. So you can see most of my swirls, they are not too tight. There is some gap, some spacing in each of them. That makes the design more prominent and elegant because then we create those gaps there that would eventually create some shadow in there and it makes the design look more elegant. That's what I feel um, should be in any of the sugar craft quilling uh, designs. That is essential in the sugar craft quilling designs. That's what I feel. Okay, now let's fill this gap. I am going to take another strip. and swirl it this is really calming i completely enjoy this i would usually put up some light music and quilling would be one of my favorite things to do in sugar craft or in paper We might go with one more to fill in that gap there. So remember it has to end where you start the swirl. That looks a lot neater. All these little things, you know, that make a difference when you create your pieces there. Once again, gently lift it and Slide it in there. So you can see we have gaps with each one of them. Okay, we could put one more here. Small little one.
Now, if your hands would be too warm or too sticky, you might tend to roll it really tight. So make sure if it's sticking onto your hands or if it's too warm and the paste is melting on your hands or on your fingertips there, use a bit of cornstarch and make it a habit to work on your mats if you're sweating. Yeah. Just a tiny more, little. Okay. Okay. Now, we are going to put skin color strips around here. But before we do that, now we need to trim this and get that into line. So, we will trim these ones gently and push the leftovers out this way. Same thing, trim this end and push the leftovers out there. Similarly here. Okay, now let's put up our skin strip there. I have rolled some skin strips. So our chino has got that beautiful skin tone um, out there. And if I want to make a different kind of skin tone, what I would do is add a bit of brown into it to get that beautiful Asian skin tone to this one here. And it's just mixing the two paste literally together to get that tone. So whatever skin tone you would prefer there, um, you can just alter by mixing two different shades there, your skin tone and your brown. Have to say uh, the brown that's the chocolate flavor and it's one of my favorite pastes. I just love the smell when I open the box there. So you are applying a bit of glue on the ends. And starting from here, on those lines, this way. Trim it here. Like so. Now, once again, using your brush tip there. You are gently going around to get that in shape from either sides. Like this. 
it adds that 3D effect to the design, isn't it? Similarly, one more strip that goes on this end. Starting from this point here. Trim that. And this way. So take your time, don't rush on doing this, especially her hands. For her hair, I have my black, sorry, chino modeling piece, and I've cut out my strips. Okay, just chop off the ends. And apply a bit of glue on the sides here. Like so. Now, gently roll this okay so we we'll first cover this then roll it just push it so that it glues well on those caps there right to that end and then curl it So I'm actually going to trim this and add an extra curl there because obviously we don't have enough there for curling it. So let's trim this. And curl a small bit here. That would go up here.
Now, you can see how big or small you want that curl to be. So I think two of those should be enough. Trim it. Let's fix. So gently press it so that it holds together like so. Now if you want you could add a few extra bits that could go in here. So I would go with perhaps one or two curls out there. Or you could just leave it plain. Once again. Take one small piece there and apply a bit of glue on the back. Pop it in here. one of them there. You could also go from here. So let's put one going right from here and curling up there. Swirl this a tiny bit. something like this that could go here and to this point so let's trim it somewhere here and apply a bit of glue a tiny bit of glue and start from this wall lift that portion there place it gently secure it well now just create those waves this going all the way up here secure it to this point now
get this to shape. This way. One more piece that goes up here. But before we do that, we'll do an outline for her face there. From here to that end. Apply a bit of glue. And gently go around her face there. Trim that extra bit. Yeah. Shape it. Give a small pinch here for her chin. This way. Now let's glue this piece here. Like this, um, trim off that excess there. Push it in, don't leave those ends there. This way, okay. We are nearly, nearly there now just outline this bits here so once again apply a bit of glue here and pop this in trim off that extra there Similarly, this end here. Apply a bit of glue on this edge. And fix that piece there. like this for this bit here I have curled up my pink strip here taking some glue start from that point up there and just finish up the curl like this so let's cut up that strip here And 
and then just get that shape there. one small piece up here Okay, so we have completed this. Now let's paint her features. That's the only thing that left. Now, if you're not good enough with painting the features, you could use the edible pen that we were using earlier just to draw outlines there and leave it. Or you could even leave it like this. It looks really modern, what I would call it. But if you want to paint the features, I'm going to show you how to paint those features. Now for painting her features, what we need is Sarcino cocoa butter. So it looks something like this. And you can just scrape off as and when you require. You just need a tiny bit of that. So this tub would last you for ages. I have a candle holder here with my tea light candle. And then I just have a palette here. You know the palette that we were using earlier with the same color. So just add tiny bit of cocoa butter in there along with all that dust and place it on top of your candle holder there. So that would melt your cocoa butter and then we can use it for painting her features. Take some brown in your brush and gently outline similarly take some more brown and go on the other side of her eyebrow there now with a thicker brush just give a gentle blend around her eyes to get that shading. Now take some blue in your brush and paint her eyeballs there. Take some black and go around on either sides of her eyeballs there. Now, 
outline her lashes there with some black dots for her eyes there. Now take some more black and a gentle line underneath both her eyes there. And then taking some white, tiny, tiny, tiny dots around her eyes there. So two tiny dots. Now take some pink. For her lips, this way. And take some dark pink for the shading out there. Just go over and blend it a bit this way. See how she is. Now let's prepare our cake and get her on the cake there. This is how she looks like. Painting those features are really easy and they really add on to the details. So make it a point to add those little details whenever you are doing any kind of sugar crop there. Now I have my two tiered cake here that I have covered with Sarcino past the top. And you can see how smooth it is. Now let's start putting up our quilling decoration on top of the cake. So before we do that, we just apply a bit of glue. I am going to put that lady onto this part of the cake here. So just apply a bit of glue. on your cake. Now this is your edible glue. By now, yes, we know. <laughs> okay, so let's put that decoration over there. Now, I have some toothpicks here which we might need to secure her on the cake there. You have to be very careful when you're lifting her. So what you're going to do is gently slide her and slightly tilt from the top to lift her like this. Gently lift her and place her in the right position here. So you are gently pressing her and trying to secure her there. Now, obviously, 
she's not going to stick immediately over there so what we'll do is put some toothpicks around her like this and try to support her and later we'll just pull out all the toothpicks so let's put all the toothpicks here we put one here one here and the other one here once she's nicely secured just pull out those toothpicks here she is nicely secured onto the cake I actually did not require any toothpicks she just got stuck with the edible glue out there so this is the ready cake now with all the quilling there you could add more decorations on the sides of the cakes if you want or you could even change the colors as per your taste i hope you like this session with me i hope you enjoyed this session of quilling on cakes with me your tutor anjali tham day don't forget to connect with us on social media network or email us. We would love to hear back from you and see all the photos of your creations. Till then, take care. Bye for now.